When faced with an improper integral, we have two somewhat different questions. The first is, does this improper integral converge or does it diverge? And then secondly, if we know that it converges, we can ask, well, what actually is the number that it converges to? However, sometimes that second question, what does it actually converge to, isn't all that important to us. Whatever we're studying, we want to know that it's well behaved, that it's not going to blow up to infinity. We want to know that it converges, but we don't particularly care what it converges to. Or alternatively, maybe it would be nice if we knew what it converged to, but the integral that we're faced with is pretty challenging and, and hard to deal with algebraically, and we'd be happy enough if we just knew that it converged. So what we're going to see in this video is a comparison test that isn't going to tell you what an integral converges to, but it's going to tell you convergence or divergence behavior based by comparing the messy, annoying integral that you have to a simpler one that you do know already whether it converges or I diverges. So the way this is going to work is that we have this theorem called the convergence test. And I'm going to do it for the special case where I have one function f that is bigger than some other function g, and both of these are positive. And then the claim is going to be that if the bigger function converges on some interval, then the smaller function must also converge because it's smaller than the bigger one and the bigger one's converging. Or conversely, if the smaller of the two functions diverges, the, the bigger one is bigger than something divergent, so the bigger one must also diverge. So to help us visualize, I'm going to draw a couple different functions. Maybe I will draw one function that I'm going to call f of x. This is going to be the bigger of my two functions. And then I'm going to have some other function, which I'm going to have down here, and I'm going to call that g of x. So if my question is, what is the integral from some a up to infinity, well, we know that underneath the f of x, it's going to be this big region here underneath the curve. And for the g of x, we're going to have some region that looks like this. And the key point is that if my f is bigger than g, then the area under the f is bigger than the area under g. So therefore, if the, the f, the area under the f converges, the area under the g must also converge. And conversely, if the area under the g diverges, since the area under the f is bigger than it, it must too diverge. So one integral that we have studied, or one family of integrals that we have studied, is the integral from a, some positive number up to infinity, of 1 over x to the p. So these are all the x to the p integrals. And we know when these are going to converge, and we know when they're going to diverge depending on the value of p. So if we have some other integral, this is going to be one of the standard things that we're going to compare it to. So for instance, let's take this one here. This is the integral of 2 to infinity of dx over 1 plus x cubed. Now, I don't really want to go and actually do this integral. I don't want to find an antiderivative for this function. Oh, we could do it by integration by partial fractions, but it's going to be a little bit of a mess. I want to quickly know whether it converges or whether it diverges. So I want to be able to compare this integrand that I have, this 1 over 1 plus x cubed, to something that I know. For instance, what about to compare it to 1 over x cubed? So what I can note is that 1 plus x cubed, this is always going to be bigger than just x cubed. Indeed, I'm just adding 1 to the other side. Or alternatively, I could say that 1 divided by x cubed is going to be a bigger thing than 1 over 1 plus x cubed. And if I know that, if I know that these integrands is going to be smaller than 1 over x cubed, I can also say that the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x cubed dx is going to be bigger by the comparison test to the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x cubed. And then I know something about this integral on the left. This is just going to be a p series. This is p greater, or excuse me, a p integral. So this is going to be p greater than 1. So this is going to converge. And if the left thing is going to converge, it means that the right thing is also going to converge. So now we know that this particular integral is going to converge. Now, we don't know what it converges to. But if we wanted to figure out what it converges to, we'd actually have to go and find an antiderivative. But we can pretty easily determine that it does indeed converge. And that isn't going to be enough 
for these present purposes. In this example, I have another integrand that's going to be a little bit messy, and I don't necessarily want to go and try to find an end derivative for it. At least, I don't want to have to bother with that if I only care about whether it converges or it diverges to. So if I want to study this, this integrand, I, I'll note that sine squared of x, sine of x is always less than 1, and so sine squared is likewise always less than 1. This is something between 0 and 1. And, and if this is going to be the case, it's also going to be the case if I divide out by x squared, then sine squared of x over x squared is going to be less than or equal to 1 over x squared. Okay, so now I'm able to compare this messy integrand that I didn't really want to deal with, with this nicer integrand, 1 over x to the p, in this case p equal to 2, I know how to do that. So by the comparison test, I can put the integral of that dx, it's less than or equal to the integral of that dx, where my integrals are going from 1 up to infinity. And then the right-hand one is going to converge. We know that as it's a 1 over x to the p for p greater than 1. And so this is going to converge. The left-hand side is also going to converge. 